Welcome to Citro Cafe. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> ciao, ciao Aleka. Ciao. Aleka Pontiga, she is a um, jazz vocalist yeah. from Romania. Yeah, singer. Well, it's very hard to put a put a name, put a name on it anymore. <laughs> Because uh, some people would say singer, songwriter, some people would say Chinese. just singer or just vocalist. I would say I'm a jazz vocalist, a cellist and a composer. Or just songwriter is, is good enough. Yeah. You draw influences from uh, Romanian music, from folk melodies combined yeah. with jazz harmonies, kind of, Eastern uh, rhythms, yeah. but also I've seen like um, Debussy and Bela Bartok. Yeah. Well, because I studied classical music since I was five. And then I've always been to, into kind of Turkish music. Uh -huh. I used to love Turkish music and kind of listen to Arabic music, Armenian stuff. Uh, so all these kind of Eastern, not Far Eastern, but just Middle Eastern, let's call, uh, and stuff. A lot of Balkanic music as well. And then I got into jazz when I, when I was 18. All right, so quite late. late. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't even know what jazz was really. Uh, so you, study, you study classical music yeah, as a cellist in, yeah. and you also graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in the... Yeah, I have two Bachelor of Arts. I have one as a cello player, like a classical cello player. I did that one in Bucharest and I have one in jazz singing and I did that one in Dublin. And then you decided <laughs> I to change. <laughs> I really didn't decide anything. I just like, I go with you the flow. And you yeah, felt yeah. like you wanted to change the words jazz. And then you studied, you studied jazz also. You studied jazz at the... Um... New Park, yeah. Uh, New Park Music Center. And now that program, that uh, jazz program is in oh. Dublin City University, yeah. I came here by chance. I just randomly came here. Uh, there were a few kind of series of events. I, I tried to apply for a, a, school, a school in Berlin. And I even talked to the singing teacher there to do some classes with her before the audition, blah, blah. But then I had a bad experience with someone at the office in Germany. I wrote some, I would just wanted to ask about the language because I didn't know German, but I didn't need to know German the first year because most of the teachers were American. So I was like, okay, I don't know German, but I, I know I can learn, do my certificate in one year, blah, blah. And the answer I got for office, well, if you're Romanian, and you want to study in Germany, you should look at other cities as well, because our level is very high. And I was like, this guy didn't know anything about me. Like, I could have been a genius or <laughs> bad, whatever. But it was a bit of a very nationalistic thing. And I was like, nah, I, I just don't want to go. I don't want to do this. So I kind of eliminated and I ended up here. And how is it here? When, how, when, when did you arrive in Ireland? Eight years ago, I think. I, I stopped counting. Eight or no, nine. <laughs> That means you like it if you stop counting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking about it anymore. Uh, I really liked it here, for, especially when I was when I came. I was like 23. It was a new experience. I wanted to leave Romania not because it wasn't good for me there. It was pretty good. You also toured a lot in Europe as a cellist, right? Playing yeah, with orchestra yeah, yeah. and ensembles. And I know you also were part already. of the. You were part of the soundtrack of the movie. Ah, uh, with you, that youth of Coppola. Yeah, I was in an orchestra doing that. That's another funny story. Let's do that for later. <laughs> that was like I was doing the recording in this orchestra, and I go home and I tell my mom, "Mom, there's this old fat guy with a beard coming around and listening. Who, who is he?" That's Coppola, you idiot. <laughs> and he was here, I didn't even realize. And then I went to see him and I was like, take an autograph and I said, I loved Lost in Translation. And he's, that's my daughter's movie. <laughs> and I was, okay, this is just like, it's fine. <laughs> At least it's on my CV. But yeah, well, that was a bit, not a crazy story. I was doing a lot of orchestra work and I was doing a lot of chamber music work as a cellist. Uh, as a jazz singer, I was barely starting. I didn't know much about jazz before I uh, came to study here in Dublin. So it was, I think it was a thing, kind of a breakaway for me. I always wanted to be a singer, but my family was into the idea of me being a cellist, which I wasn't into. Well, like it was fine, it was music, I liked it, but it wasn't my main goal, you know? So how was the transition from uh, cello to vocals, you know? Yeah, well, from cello to vocals, it was, kind of hard it's just different instruments you know technique and just learning i did some lessons with luisa zan in romania which is like probably the best jazz vocalist right now there and i also did some classical uh, technique with uh, irina Erdekescu, which is again super big there just kind of tiny bits uh, trying to get some type of singing going <laughs> uh, but then uh, from 
classical music to jazz was hard because as a classical musician you're so connected to your your script let's say your page all the time of course. to the music that's written you're just almost brainwashed not being able to do anything without it uh, and that was something that I wasn't into because I always felt like this uh, I couldn't put enough of my print in it because there was a composer's print already you know like yeah. I was just interpreting this that was already there for me jazz I think is life and life is jazz, right? Because it's exactly like life, no? It's spontaneous, it's a free expression of uh, yourself. You have um, spaces of improvisation, but you also have to be in that uh, flow. So yeah. you know where to come and to place that input, yeah, and, right? Yeah, it was, a hard, it's a, it was a hard transition, but it was completely worth it. Because now I don't care about that page anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not taking anything away from classical music, which, in my opinion, is still the root of everything else that's great in music. Mm -hmm. You know, Bach or whatever. You know, it's like it's things you can't take away from it. But for me, in the scene right now, especially in the classical scene, it was always about you know a lot of competition and a lot of competition best based on technicality not based on something that was really kind of creative. But you also took part in lots of competitions because you won lots of awards as far as I've seen in your head. Yeah, when I was a child, but that's a normal thing you would do. And in a way, I think that competition uh, uh, vibe, constant vibe, took kind of away my, my love for all that kind of scene. For the, not for the music, but for the scene and how the thing is working, really. Competition, it's, it's in everything. Uh, let's say it's in classical the... music, there's more labeling than it is in jazz. Yeah. In jazz, is your own input. There's no, there's no note that you have to reach or don't have to reach. There's no status, there's no box, really. It's whatever you want to do. And that's the beauty of it, isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah, it's more And it's real. also, I think, is that you're always in search of different rhythms and different sounds and different no? Yeah, 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 because you have to create, you know, what was, as a classical musician, what was laid out for you so perfectly, because this great composer did it all for you, really. Mm -hmm. You just have to express it, but in jazz, you have to look for it. When you're doing interpretation and composition at the same second when you're on stage. It doesn't work. Of course, there's rules and, you know, structures and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you're, it's, it's, it's two ways, you know, it's not just this constant technical, yeah. I know we, we first met in Bello Bar. You had a gig there, Romania 100 songs yeah, of love and longings, yes, right? Yeah. And I remember you were combining uh, melodies of Maria Tanase, am I yeah. right? With jazz harmonies. And just, yeah. you know what I like? That you sang both in Romanian and in, in English. I did English as well. And you did, remember. yeah, you did. You yeah, I do. <laughs> I do, yes, it was super because the crowd was also mixed and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I thought it was, was beautiful that you sang also in Romanian and in... Yeah, I was supposed to record that project. I had a recording date booked for May, but uh, obviously it didn't help it anymore now. Uh, last year you released the CD, Person I Knew, yeah. and you are singing with a band which is formed. In yeah, it was a ridiculous jazz band. You can't get a better band than that. There's a famous uh, a, a Dutch drummer, uh, Eric Ineke, and he used to be in the jazz rhythm sections of all the big American guys when they used to come to play in Europe all the time, I don't know, 60s, 70s, all the, all the time. So he's huge. Um, and he just came to do a workshop in DCU where I teach, I'm a jazz lecturer there. So he did a workshop and he had a day off and I was like, huh, let's just do something because he's here. So I recorded the whole album in one day. It was just one session, once through, the, the one woman take. <laughs> It's, no, it's it's not it's not perfect. It's uh, the album. It's kind of raw, but it's very good. It's almost like a like a live gig. Uh, and I got really like the best musicians you can get in Ireland right now. I got Ronan Gilfoyle on bass, which is again it's like one of the biggest names in Ireland. Uh, Chris Gilfoyle on guitar, and then Michael Buckley on saxophone, which Michael Buckley is another superstar of jazz. So I was like, I'm doing this. This is like the thing right <laughs> yeah but again i uh i was supposed to do so many things with that album that i had planned for this year i but, can imagine yeah but, but you I had many gigs last, last year as well yes yeah i have many many gigs of different projects i did uh, releasing it and everything yeah and this year 
yeah, pandemic, and it's been I know it's been a hard year for uh, for many of us, and I mm. think for many artists and performers and musicians, with so many venues that are closing down. Yeah, both um, small and big. And, They're uh, closing down as in running out of business, but we've been locked down, locked down since so March. How uh, how are you doing this time? And. Uh, yeah for being so busy and then did you have any yeah i'm lucky in a way that i still have my living wage like because i'm teaching so i'm i'm fine but i because I, I used to work 12 hours a day now i'm back to six let's <laughs> call it when i used to have gigs and you know but most people that because there's so many musicians in uh, ireland and in the world that are based on gigs and that's their living wage and that's gone and and that's, sad, yeah. yeah, it's really crazy and it's crazy as well that I I feel we're in this kind of point where it's almost like you can't really do anything about it. It's really weird. There's no there's no structural way that we could do anything about that. It's all uncertain and we don't have a we don't know when we can reopen. We don't know it's very uncertain, so it's very hard to plan also. The yeah, only thing that we anything. can do you can't plan anything. Yeah, and we are like all the gigs are planned, like or exhibitions or anything and anything it's planned ahead. And nowadays it's very hard to plan and um, and I think it's this time of introspection for many of us. But you were you were doing you were part of some festivals online yeah, festivals, I did, no? yeah, during this time. A, yeah, I did on, on online festival jazz, Limerick Jazz. In Limerick, they did some live stuff because there was a month, I think, when the things were opening, but now they're closed again. Um, that was the only thing I did during the pandemic that was paid. Imagine that. So since March to now, the only, or was it two maybe? I think there was two. Two paid gigs, online stuff. That's grim. From, you know, from going to, as a jazz musician, it's not like you have many gigs. Uh, especially in the contemporary jazz, like what I do, like kind of this creative world. But you'd have three, four, at least a month, let's say, if you have a bad month. Yeah. Uh, but I <laughs> ended and up to have two in one year, <laughs> which is like, yeah, it's a bit on the crazy side. Uh, I done, but I've done loads of, like I've kept busy. I did loads of kind of remote projects with friends from home. <laughs> uh, so you were playing, uh, and you're playing online as well, yeah? You did something together or just? Yeah, yeah, we recorded, we recorded. I, rec I, I was thinking to do this kind of coronavirus pandemic album almost, because <laughs> I recorded so many songs uh, just in my room. Uh, I recorded something in collaboration with this guitar player in Bucharest, Ciprian Pop, who's one of my friends and the first guy, one of the first guys I ever played with, you know, ages ago. Uh, he wrote a song and I put some lyrics on and we did a recording. Uh, and I also, I arranged, I arranged a standard for four cellos and voice and one of my best friends back home, Ella Bokor, she recorded all those cellos and we just, you know, like you did this kind of video, it's really pretty, that one turned out really pretty. So just things like that to make an album that probably we're going to sell in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> But also, I think, um, as an artist, regardless of the pandemic or regardless of what's going outside, what's going inside, it's always coming out and we're pouring out on paper or you know, maybe composing sounds or, uh, yeah. you know, so we're always, I think, yeah. either if we can't really perform, maybe it's a time to... It's not In a way, I found, I found this time to be harder to do that even, to be honest. I found myself having weeks of not wanting to do anything. It's just, I, I guess it's normal because it's such a rough time. It's really so new and kind of scary in a way. You know, things just stop, right? It's like almost like this topic movie or something, you know? Uh, but yeah, I found myself having periods of time where I'd be like, when it's all started, <clears throat> I was like, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach from home. I can sleep. I was like tired anyway. So oh, this is great <laughs> for a month. And then I was like, okay, this keeps going. And then I started working. I was like, okay, let's do this. We, and I did with my, my boyfriend, with Chris, is guitar, the guitar player. I did this kind of joke online called One Cough Samba instead of One Note Samba. So we're doing like coronavirus lyrics. So we're just having fun, you know, just like jokes. And then, ha ha ha, after one month. Serious. Yeah, I was like, okay. And a month I didn't do anything. I think the whole kind of two, three months in the summer I didn't. Same I think for it. for most of us was the month was like to adjust and we were just like we needed that pause as we were all so busy and engaged in so many activities and then that pause came and then we just uh, and then after that pause was like 
okay now what because you didn't know when it's going to restart but in the in the same time like i i believe we we start to connect more with the nature and we start to connect more outdoors uh, rather than before was like indoors you know even now like even now on the dublin streets you see how many terraces they are before there were so many right finally and now everyone is on the terrace which is more outdoors and um it's more animated even though it was before Dublin, don't get me wrong, but now it feels more and also people uh, And to be connecting. honest, in Dublin, we're, you know, socializing uh, around alcohol is a thing, like a, almost like a, a cultural thing, it was good to get out of that. <laughs> Yes, like in the pub. It was kind of, yeah, yes. yeah, it was good to just get out of the pub. Also in the winter time, of course, like mm. beside the fireplace, you know, with the pint, of course, that's part of the culture and... Uh, yeah. But now, uh, <laughs> being outdoors, it's, uh, it's a different, uh, different story. Tell me a bit about um, how is the jazz scene in Ireland? Who are the people who are supporting the, the jazz scene? Yeah, the jazz scene in Ireland is in a kind of rough kind of patch, let's say. I've been here it's like eight years and I've seen the change in eight years, how it kind of went a bit downhill. Apparently it's been even better before, obviously. But like the main jazz club that used to be here, JJ Smith, it was on Andre Street, uh, closed down a few years ago. And that was like a huge hit for the scene because like suddenly so, so, it was no place to play. You know, you, jazz is that kind of uh, music that needs the club. Because people don't really always go to listen to a certain jazz singer or a certain jazz player. They go to listen to jazz in general. It's like, Jazz is like the love for this broad, you know, experiment or, you know. And if you don't have that core, that's very complicated. And that disappeared. And then there was another one created, which is now Arthur's Pub on Thomas Street. Uh, and that's, that plays also a lot of blues, but that's kind of the main place now. That's the only place. Only one. Then there's the Improvised Music Company, which is a company that uh, you know, gets funded by the Arts Council, as I know, and is supporting like Irish uh, musician or Irish-based Irish residents in Ireland uh, in jazz and improvised music. But that's one company. So you have one club and one company. <laughs> And the rest, yeah, and the rest is up to you. Mm -hmm. And also, the most of the jazz festivals are outside of Dublin. Like, yeah, um, no, we have a lot. But they, have, they, they grow in strength and diversity in the past years. Like the we uh, have Bray Jazz the Festival, the Cork Jazz Festival, Cork then jazz more festival. regional like Bray, Galway, Limerick, yeah, right? Limerick. The There's many, but there's issues with them. They're losing funding as well. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. It's not. It's it's kind of it's a bit of a hard time for the arts in general. Like, yeah, in Euro uh, Ireland is not like Germany, you know, Germany is, because the culture is different. Uh, they have so much funding into the arts, but that's so rare. You have France or Germany who does that. And uh, by funding, I mean funding not only classical music musicians, because classical music is funded everywhere, but like for everything else, like creative jazz, songwriters, electronic music, whatever. You don't have many countries to be really strong on that right now. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, let's say. What's great for me in Ireland is that the level of musicianship here, musicians are amazing. The level is really good. So that would, that's always been a plus. And how is now, how are the women in jazz? How was the... <laughs> <laughs> getting it? Oh because my I think God. More more. Are we getting into this? Yes. If you want to. Yeah, we should definitely. Well, you are a woman and yes. you are a jazz vocalist. So it's, it's hard to be a woman in general, especially to be a band leader, is hard. You kind of, I feel like you kind of have to own it. And if you, if you know, if anyone's gonna say something about you that you're being too, whatever, you own it. It's fine. I'd rather be too strong, let's say, than too weak. Or you know, like I have no problem with leading my band and telling my musicians what to play and do this because that's what I want and I don't need your opinion. You know, kind of, you know, what a man would do. <laughs> <laughs> and they would well, be nice, yes, but I think it's more like um, you know when you when you have a vision and you know what you like to do, regardless of gender, if you're a man or a woman. Like, yeah, you, it's if not you that. have a vision for that, of course you're gonna guide and you'll say this. I have yeah, to say. it's not what you do; it's how the what reaction you get. You know, like I had a 
Oh, I had a friend uh, who was doing a gig in a jazz festival. It was a women's festival, very funny. And the producer, the stage producer, instead of going her, to her to ask something about, I don't know, went to the guitar player. And the guitar player said, oh, I'm asking me, I'm not the leader of the band, just ask the leader. Like, it's, it's very, like small little things, you know, you just, why wouldn't you ask the woman? It's her band, like, why would you go to the side man? Things like that. And as a woman, it's hard. It's hard to be promoted. It's, it's it's still very much a man's world. You feel like it? Oh, I not only feel I could show you data. <laughs> like I could tell you, I could tell you how many women mus jazz musicians are in Ireland, and how many gigs they do, and what they have to work for to get those gigs, and how many men there are, how many gigs they do. And also, boys like to play with boys, you know. We're going through it, don't worry. I'm fixing all. I'm we're fixing pushing it all. Through. We're pushing through. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're pushing through. And it always seems impossible until it is done, you know? Like, yeah, it's, it's being like done Mandela anyway. Says, it's not like yeah. six years ago. I think or... if we push through, we can, we can do things and we can do things the way we feel it. But also, I think your own print, you know, your own vision, it will come true as long as you do it and you push it yeah, through and you're, you're and there I'm an and example, you're present. I'm an example that I've been, like, all the, my work that I've done here has been, you know, valued. Like, I became a lecturer in DCU. I was nobody when I came here. That was just based on my honors degree, you know. So, I'm an example of everything I did are, was you fine, you, you know. Oh, like, you came here, it was a different country. Um, different language, you change from classical to jazz. I change then, everything. <laughs> yeah, then you are a lecturer in the CU, you know, you, you are, you have a great career as a jazz vocalist here, right? In yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. also play in, in Romania as well. Sometimes you when, I, when I end up going there, yes. <laughs> yes, when we end up going there, yes, true. But you keep connection with, yeah, uh, yeah, with friends there friend, and you yeah, go yeah. and you go and you also play, uh, play there. So what's next, Aleka? What, what inspires you? What, what's next? What do you have? Um... Yeah, there's so many things I like to do. And now that we couldn't do anything really, it's when I realized, you know what? Whenever this is opening, there's so many things I like to do. I like to sing pop songs. I always was into the, yeah, definitely. As a child, and I was like, oh, I like to sing this like Latin American music. I used to love a lot of things. So I'm just gonna like, <laughs> you know, broaden the spectre when I, when I, when I'll be able to get gigs again. <laughs> but yeah, for first thing would be the Romanian uh, album. That's gonna be the first thing that's gonna be recorded. And will be like, you're gonna sing entirely in Romanian or are you? I, well, I'm not sure. I'm, I think I'm gonna do certain songs. They're really strong songs. I'm gonna do versions of some words in, in lyrics, uh, in English and some in uh, Romanian. Or maybe I'll do double tracks. I have it one in Romanian and a whole one in English as well, translated. Yeah, uh, yeah it was just a combination of, you know, so kind of to show more the, the tradition that we have back home and which is here which now because there's so many yes, here. It's yeah. beautiful, you still keep that and you're, you're bringing yeah. it into your own music. So when I moved, it's when I got closer to it. It's very funny. And it's part of your identity. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely. part of the identity and uh, you draw inspiration from that, from the roots. So yeah, then yeah. it's it's a beautiful thing. It's great. <laughs> thank you so much. I love Thanks. chatting with you and thank oh, you for thank being you. here at Thanks Sintra for Cafe. Having me. And um, looking forward to our next uh, chat. Great. Thank yes, you. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs>